welcome you all to the part 7 of semiconductor in this section we will be studying about opto electronic junction devices then what are these devices these devices are diodes in which the charge carriers are generated by photons we all know that in generally uh, in a semiconductors the charge carriers are produced when the temperature is increased when temperature is increased electrons move from uh, valence band to conduction band and electron hole pairs are generated and that, that is how charge carriers are produced but these are the special devices in which the charge carriers are produced by the energy of photons than the energy of the heat now okay so there are uh, three photo electronic junction devices what we will be studying today in that the first one is photodiode the next is led and another one is solar cell we will be studying one by one okay let us go with the first one that is a photo diode right so the name itself says the photo which makes use of light to him it is a diode which detects optical signals so why we need to detect the optical signals whenever uh, you, you whenever we think about the photo diodes we think about the uh, fire alarms right so when there is a fire in a building and uh, the person who who is there in the building should come to know that there is fire without seeing the fire itself so that is possible by using the diodes because diode uh, detects the optical signals and gives an alarm uh, to all the people who is present in that building okay there is a fire and you, you must go out of the building now here okay that is the main purpose of the diode which detects the optical signal right and so in this is a diode in which the light energy is converted into electric energy right the light falls on it and it uh, it converts into electric energy how it does we will see further on right here, here it works in the reverse bias do you remember as a zener diode we discussed it it works in the reverse bias this also works in the reverse bias itself so why we are connecting a photo diode to the reverse bias because the fractional change of uh, current in reverse bias can be easily measurable as compared to the forward bias that's why we will be using this in the reverse bias and the principle used in this photo diode is photo voltaic effect photo when the light falls on the diode here and the emf is generated that's why it has emf generated current is generated here that's why the name is photo voltaic effect so this is the principle that we will be seeing in this photo diode let us go with the photo diode again there is a pn junction i told you this is a diode itself there is a pn junction and uh, at this pn junction is reverse biased then p is connected to negative n is connected to positive right and we all know that if a diode is reverse biased there is a depletion region the length of the depletion region increases and there is an electric field created here right so there is an electric field there is a plus and there is minus and the movement of the charges in reverse bias is due to the electric field okay that is the thing again so this is a diode and the light falls on the diode and we are making the diode in a such a way that it is a transparent so that the light falls on it and it can be easily recognized now right so easily that electrons can jump to the uh, valence band to conduction band so it is uh, what we said here optic now right so we are we are making it as a transparent this region we will making it transparent when a light falls on it right when there is a fire uh, in the building now here the the light which is emitted by it it falls on a diode what happens it falls on a diode when it falls on the diode the electrons which are present in the valence band jumps to the conduction band now right when it jumps to the conduction band electron hole pairs are generated and these pairs are generated uh, they are moved by using the uh, by using the electric field the electric field when the electron hole pairs are generated the electric the electrons are attracted by this uh, positive potential now here that's why the electrons move towards the nn side and holes move towards the p side okay we are seeing here the light of suitable energy suitable energy means the, the energy of the light must be greater than the energy gap so uh, when light of suitable energy falls on the depletion region electron hole pairs are generated yes electron hole pairs are generated and due to the electric field electrons move towards n side and holes move towards p side right electrons hole moves and uh, which which use rise to the emf right when the emf uh, when there is rise in emf we know that the current flows now right so when external load is connected as we are connected we can connect a bulb to it now right or we can connect an alarm to it now right so like this if we connecting an external load the current flows through it since the emf is generated right so when external load is connected current flows and the current flow uh, depends upon what we said again intensity of incident light 
as intensity of incident light increases we know that as intensity increases number of photons increases means number of electrons jumping from valence band to conduction band increases and hence the current increases so one thing you need to remember that the current which is produced by the photodiode that directly depends upon the intensity right that we are seen in the iv characteristics as intensity of the light increased i3 is more i2 and i1 now you have so the current what we got here that also increased with the intensity and this is the iv characteristic of a photodiode just remember when the light falls on a photodiode so emf is generated and hence the uh, electrons moves and the, the current is uh, produced now right that is that is how the photodiode works and uh, uh, these photodiodes are used in especially they are used to detect uh, the light in cameras also how much the light is that it can also be detected and it can uh, it is used in sensors right i think you have seen in banks uh, uh, that is uh, <clears throat> cash counters you will be you, you will be seeing a machine which counts how much uh, the number of uh, notes are there okay in that also we are using this uh, leds right there, there are a lot of uh, applications so whenever there is uh, light it detects it and it tells us that okay there is a light and this is the working of photo diodes and uh, the second one is about led light emitting diodes and uh, the name itself says it emits light the diode emits light when forward biased means uh, it is just a reverse of photodiode diode it uh, converts electrical energy into what is in here light energy and uh, it works on the principle that the energy is released due to recombination of electron hole and holes before i go with that let me tell you that when an electron jumps from valence band to conduction band it receives energy in the form of heat or in the form of light as we have seen but the same electron when it comes back it emits energy right if it emits energy in the form of light we call it as a, a the light emission here yeah, okay so this is the principle that we will be using in uh, led that is recombination of electron and hole takes place whenever there is a recombination of electron and hole takes place the energy is emitted that is in the form of uh, light here yeah, okay so let us see that it's working over here it is a pn junction and it should be forward biased do remember right p is connected to positive n is connected to negative right what happens when it is a forward biased when the diode is forward biased we know that the depletion region decreases what happens if depletion region decreases Charge, charge, charge carriers begins to move now here, right? So let us say when diode is forward bias, width of depletion region decreases. Then majority charge carriers begins to move. Means P side majority charge carriers are holes, and N side minority charge carriers majority charge carriers are electrons. They begin to move from N to P, right? Electrons move from N to P, and holes move from P to N, right? So as majority charge carriers begins to move now here, what happens? at the depletion region recombination of electron and hole takes place right when uh, electron and hole takes place it releases energy in the form of light right this recombination of electron hole and releasing of light and this is the principle of light emitting diodes and we will be this is the this is the generation of led now right everything is in the form of led so whenever we take up the remote controls just when we on the tv now here right so the light which is emitting there it, of course it is in the form of uh, infrared because it depends upon the energy right energy of the uh, band gap now here right so uh, that with there also we will be using leds and you, you know you know that in any of the equipments power on off uh, so if there it is a short circuit will come to know by the seeing the led itself and even the optical fibers right in optical fiber communications uh, the sources which are used is laser and as well as sometimes we will be using led is also as a source of uh, optical fiber and this was about uh, the second one that is light emitting diodes and uh, the third is about a solar cell okay solar cell first of all you should understand it is a diode itself which uh, generates emf when solar radiation falls on it there is a diode when a light falls on a diode it generates emf right it behaves like a cell itself right so when it generates uh, emf in solar radiation falls on it and uh, the normal uh, solar cell what you see it is in this form okay so uh, it is a diode i said it is a pn junction diode Yeah, this is N side and this P side. N side is a little bit thinner compared to the P side, and uh, uh, so that solar radiation which fall directly fall on the junction here, right? That's why it is made thinner here. So this is uh, N P, and uh, at the P we have a back contact, and at the N we have the front contact. Let me call it as metallized finger electrodes. 
right? For this E N junction, we are using these contacts, back contacts and front contacts because the whenever the LIR, the charges are accumulated, they need to move. They they need to move. It's we need to connect to a conductor, right? So we as we need to connect connect to a conductor, we are using the back contacts and the front contact and uh, the diagram, the same diagram. I will be showing you this way here. There is a P N junction diode here. And uh, the solar radiation falls, and EMF is generated. It is just uh, similar to the photodiode. There also I told you it is the principle is photovoltaic effects. But there the diode was reverse biased. Here there is no biasing or something, right? So we are, we are using specific kind of uh, material so that when the light falls, the, the electron hole pairs are generated, and thus uh, the EMF is produced later. Right? The principle is photoelectric effects. Right. Let me summarize the working. Uh, the, there are three processes in solar cell. So first one is generation, the second one is separation, and another one is collection. Right. The, it is similar to the photodiode operation itself. Let us check it out. What happens here? When solar radiation falls in the diode, okay, the solar radiation falls at the junction. Right. At the junction, the solar radiation falls. When solar radiation falls at the junction, you know that the electrons jump from valence band to conduction band, band giving rise to electron hole pairs. Let me call it as electron hole pairs are generated. And this process, let me call it, is the first process that is the generation. And uh, due to the electric field of the junction, electrons move towards the N side and uh, holes move towards the P side, giving rise to EMF. And this kind of process is called as separation because the whole pair generated are separated due to the electric field, and the process is called as separation. Right? When they are separated, I told you earlier, we have the back contact and front contact. Electrons collected. Uh, collected by front contact. So the okay, electrons which come to the N side are collected by the front contacts. Holes which are collected in the P side are collected by the uh, back contact, and this process is called as collection. And uh, so this gives rise to EMF. Simple, right? Light falls, electron hole pairs are generated. They are separated and they are collected by the ends now here. Thus the EMF is generated. And you know that solar cells. There are many applications of solar cells. Some of the calculators what you use uh, use solar radiations. And uh, uh, you have seen that, right? Even for the space vehicles which are moving, okay, right? They use the solar radiations and they move. There, there are a lot more applications, and this is the era of uh, solar cells itself, right? So we make use of solar radiations and we produce the current, okay, right? So the IV characteristics, if you see about the solar cell, I have drawn here this IV characteristics, and the graph. Is in the fourth quadrant. Why is in the fourth quadrant? Because the solar cell is not drawing the current; it is supplying the current. That's why it is in the fourth quadrant. And uh, here I have written as VOC, that is open circuit voltage. What is meant by open circuit? If we are not connecting uh, the to the load here, right? It is not connected to a load. The maximum voltage, or there is no uh, current. If you are not connecting to the load, the, there will be no current. Right? So uh, the current is zero. But what is the voltage? Maximum voltage? Let me call it as. Open the circuit to voltage, and when we connect this wire to this wire, that is called a short circuit, right? When we make it a short circuit, maximum current flows, and what is that maximum current? I S C, that is uh, short circuit current, and this is how this is uh, what what we call it as I V characteristics of a solar cell, right? So today we discussed about uh, photodiodes, LEDs, and solar cells, and these are optoelectronic junction devices. Right? Thank you.